Good morning. This is John from the Spring Swing the Night Church. And I'm here again talking about the week after Easter. Now, after what I talked about in the book of Luke, uh, we move on to the book of Acts. For those of you who don't know, the book of Acts is kind of like the second part of the book of Luke. They flow together, written by the same fellow, and the, the timeline is pretty much consistent. So if we look now at the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, here's what we see. So when the apostle, apostles, apostles, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, I want to back up just a second here to sort of set the stage for this. All through the ministry of Jesus, people thought his primary purpose in coming was to reestablish David's kingdom and set the Jews up on top of everybody else and to at least get rid of those hated Romans. They thought he was going to initiate a new worldly on this earth kingdom. Now he told them many times he wasn't going to do that. That wasn't his purpose, but they just couldn't get rid of that thought. Now, if, if I had lived under the persecution of the Romans like they did, and I had a, a long theological tradition that there was going to be a Messiah who was going to come establish the kingdom, I'd have thought the same thing. I mean, I don't think this is a strange thought for the, the followers of Jesus to have, even, even those who walked with him, those 12 disciples. Well, 11 at this point. But what's significant is, after all of Easter, after all of the miracles, after all of that stuff, what are they asking? <laughs> Has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? You hear that? The one thing that's highest on their priority is establishing our kingdom. Now, I I don't want to I don't want to say too much about this. I don't want to blow it up into something it isn't. But I think the disciples had a real problem with pride. I think even after three years of living and walking and eating and talking with Jesus. They still had a problem with getting what they want. Now, I say that because that should be encouraging to you and me if we have that problem. And you know what? <laughs> I bet you we do. I bet you there are very, 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 very few followers of Jesus who don't have the problem of wanting what they want. I guess it's part of the human condition. It's what we call sin. But the disciples are told directly. And so I would say that here Jesus tells you and me directly. That time, the time, the date, all of that stuff, they are not for you to know. Why? Because that's God's decision. And as far as we can tell, he's not sharing that with anybody. As crazy as it might be, I read in the paper the other day that, that there's a new movement among Christianity, and that's praying for the Armageddon, for the end of the world. Well, why in the world would you want to pray for that, given 
what Jesus says right here. What does he say? But not you and your kingdom, not you and your desires, but the, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you're to be my witnesses. Well, what he's saying is, I'm leaving, but the Holy Spirit will come. We know from later on that we're told to wait for it. I don't think we're told to wait today like some people think. But they're told to wait on what they want for the Holy Spirit to come. And when it comes, then their job is to be witnesses to the whole world. Now, back to the comment about Armageddon. Have we really shared the gospel to the whole world? I don't think so. Scholars who study a mission work say we haven't. Heck, there are a whole bunch of people within five miles of my voice where I'm recording this that haven't really heard the gospel, much less thousands, tens of thousands of miles away. We need to be not like the disciples here. Don't think about what I want. I know, I want, I want, and I want some good stuff, but I want. Think about what God wants. And what God wants is for you and me to live a life that reflects the life of Jesus so that we can share that with everybody we meet. Now, that's what Jesus said. <laughs> I didn't make it up. I just read it. So what about your life? Hmm? Are you stuck on what you want? Are you at least open to the possibility that what you want may not be what God wants? And then finally, the question is, are you witnessing? And the answer to that is yes. You may not be witnessing to who Jesus is, and you might be witnessing to who Jesus isn't, but either way, you're still witnessing. So think about today. Who are you portraying to those around you? Well, thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow. i got two more chances at this. Hope you have a really, really great day. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can to help out. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you. I'll be back tomorrow.